Hello everybody, it's SP here, and in today's video we're going to be learning how to balance a Skywatcher Star Adventure. Now, this is one of the more complicated mounts, even though this is one of the easier mounts, the beginner mounts. Skywatcher, the Skywatcher manual doesn't really teach you how to manually balance the mount, especially if you've got a huge lens on here like I do. Um, they advertise it using 18-55mm lens, the small little ones, but for the larger mounts, for the larger lenses, they don't. So I'm going to be teaching you how to balance it correctly. Since a lot of people online deal with two-way balancing, the first thing that really set me off of getting this mount is it doesn't have a two-way balancing. It has the one direction, but it doesn't have the other direction, which means there's no sliding here. So I had to purchase a slider here, which it should... It's not exactly an astrophotography slider. It's more of a photography slider. It's an X-Max, I believe, E-X-M-A-X. I'll link it down below. But this is what I got uh, to manually balance the Star Adventurer, especially in this direction since this camera lens adds to the weight of the Star Adventurer so heavily. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to teach you how to actually balance this. Everyone's like, you know, oh, balance it to the left, balance it to the right. You know, when it's like there, you know, even though it's balanced now, and sometimes it'll tilt like down or it'll, you know, tilt up depending on how you balance it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to balance it in the three cardinal directions. Now everyone's like, you should balance it in the two cardinal directions. You should balance it in the one direction, which is left to the right. But what I like to do is I always like to do a third direction just to make sure there isn't, isn't any leaning on the bottom. Because if there's any leaning on the bottom towards the left or the right, that means you need to adjust um, where this is usually. You never usually have to adjust the dovetail. Everyone tells you that you know you need to put it back left or right, depending on that. But if you've got a good enough weight balance here, this is on the bottom where it should be around halfway or a little bit further down, you, should really, you shouldn't really have to move this more than it's actually supposed to be. So once that's done, you balance it now to three ways. You're going to start to balance it on the second cardinal direction, or I should not second cardinal direction, I should say the second orientation, which is to the left or the right, not up or down. And I know we're kind of dealing with polar alignment here. This is just the terms I use. They are not at all the correct terms, but this is just the terms I use. So we're going to balance it using this thing, and I'll show you here. We're going to balance it using, this is the screw that moves this up or down, and this is the tightener. I should have really made this a lock. I should have purchased a locked one instead of a screw because this can slip, but the good thing is, is it can be tightened really hard, so there's no need to do that. And you also wanna make sure, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we'll rotate it. You also wanna make sure that if you do have a extender or a dovetail extender that can move it up or down, you wanna make sure that this thing is tightened to the extreme. Um, when I took my Orion picture that I'm going to display here, you can see that there are some dragging lines and that was because about halfway in, this became loose and it started to drag to the side when this started to rotate this way, which was not at all what we wanted. So yeah, make sure this is tight, make sure this is tight. You don't want to over tighten it, you don't want it to be unmovable, but you do want it to be so secure to the point where you can't even, you can't move this with your hands. You want to move it with the tools that you're provided. And the good thing is the Skyward Star Adventure has this little doohickey here where you can tilt it very ever so slightly to the direction you want. What I'm very displeased in is when they made this adventure, you know, this is a great beginner amount. Like if you're just getting into astrophotography and using a small lens, this is great. But when you start wanting to go into the deep sky fields, you know, anywhere from 100 millimeters to 300 millimeters and beyond, the lens, the lens is... Are really heavy so what you end up having to do is having to end up 3d balancing the mount and I will add that if we can rotate this around you'll probably be able to spot my own little screws here which yes I had to manually replace the screws for the the polar finder because the polar finder screws fell out and it was misaligned for a long time so I had to actually re put some screws in and then I was able to pull the line finally again I'm still going to have to get a 2x magnification for the polar alignment because that's another thing. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with this mount to the point where I wouldn't even consider putting a $400 price tag on it. I put this at $150 because of actually how crap it is. If you're looking to get a beginner mount, go with something that actually has a built-in glow for the polar line. This doesn't have a built-in glow, glow thing. You know, it's like the little white fluorescent thing that if you shine it with a flashlight, it glows. 
this is not included in that. So for $450, they really did a terrible job with this mount. You, you're probably better off getting the GTI mount, um, which is around $650. I haven't gotten it yet because, you know, I'm broke. I can't afford anything. Uh, but it's just, it's so much better for a $200 upgrade versus this. You have to do so much stuff to actually make this mount work. But that's how you align it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to, again, one direction, make sure it's balanced, slide this up or down if you need to. The other direction, it should just be balanced by then, but if it's not, you know, just slide it up or down. And another thing I see a lot of people doing is they'll tap it. They'll tap the mount and it'll go to the direction they want. What you actually have to do is hold it and then let it go. If it doesn't move when you let it go, that means it's balanced. Um, but if you're like, if you're just like, you know, like, like here, like, like see, sometimes it just doesn't want to balance. That's perfectly fine because we're fighting gravity here. And by the time you've gotten to this point on polar alignment, yeah, that's below the ground. You're not going to balance it like that. So the stars aren't going to be there. Maybe here, um, like see here, it's balanced. But if I were to go anything below this, it's probably not going to work well. See, it's not even moving. So any anytime like you try to balance it, you know, this way, this way, and then you like balance it from here, it's going to go down. It's going to, it's going to go back to the, the third axis because you're fighting with gravity here. You're fighting with gravity. What I would recommend doing is tilting this to a 45 degree angle to ensure absolute stability. That's what I do. I tilt this to a 45 degree angle if you are struggling with balancing them out because then you're just going to be on your own axis. See, now it's much, much easier to balance this. And you can see it's leaning a little bit that way. So we can just barely move this like ever so slightly and that should fix that so yeah so now it's not moving anymore so that's what i recommend i always put it at 45 degrees three axis and then if you have a really large lens like i do i'd recommend doing it on the two axis um because nobody everyone's you know got their thousand dollar mount that automatically does everything for them and then everyone recommends oh you know get this little 450 fifty dollar cheapy doohickey mount that's been stripped down and stripped down to such an extreme where you don't even know what to do with it. So, and you just give up. So that's how you actually balance the mount. It's very complicated. And I'd like to add again, if you do get this mount, use it. But if you are in the consideration of buying this mount, don't buy it because you're just better off getting a $200 upgrade for the GTI mount, which is so much better. I would just recommend the GTI mount over any day over this mount because I've heard so many complaints about this mount. Um, not that it does its does job. If you don't push it towards its limits, it's going to do its job. If you use a regular regular size lens without all this doohickey crap I put on it, it's going to work fine. But if you're an advanced astrophotographer like me, who barely is able to afford anything and can't afford an extra mount, I would not buy this. I would buy the $650 mount. That's just a little bit better of an upgrade. And I would just balance it that way because that actually has a built-in declination bracket. You gotta, you gotta get the right ascension, you got the declination. So, yeah, really interesting. That's how you balance a Skyward to Star Adventure. And nobody does it correctly. Everyone's like, you know, balance it this way, balance it that way. But they've all got the third axis here. They've all got the secondary axis, the, the declination that they don't talk about. And that's what makes their balancing so easy. Because uh, they're using a different mount. Nobody ever actually talks about how to balance this thing. And there's been so many new variations of the mount that have come out now that I don't even know what they've done with it. They might have changed it a little bit. But yes, that's how you balance a mount. That's how you balance the Skyward to Stars Adventure specifically. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time, and goodbye.